Hey guys, so this video will show you how you can very easily calculate the effective interest rate for any financial instrument using Excel. So in this example, we're investing in a £100,000 corporate bond, which means it's a financial asset because it's an investment. The bond will pay us a 10% coupon, so that 10% will be based on the par value of the bond. So to calculate the coupon that we will receive at the end of each year, it will be the corporate bond par value times the percentage coupon rate, which gives us 10,000. We receive this amount at the end of each year, and the term of the um, corporate bond is four years. So at the end of four years, we will get our money back at a premium of 20%. What does that mean? Well, at the end of four years, in addition to the coupon payments that we will receive at the end of each year, we also receive £120,000, which represents an additional profit for us. So how do we calculate the effective interest rate based on these variable factors? Well, in order to do that, we've got to use the internal rate of return function in Excel. So what the effective interest rate effectively um, calculates is that it gives us the interest rate or the discount rate at which the present value of future cash flows needs to equal the amount that we invest today. So we're investing £100,000 today and the present value of all future cash flows, cash inflows, needs to equal this 100000 which we're investing today. So in order to do that, we need to um, demonstrate our cash flow within Excel. So we've got initially um, a £100,000 cash outflow, which is our investment in the corporate bond. So we, we put a negative um, sign in front of it. So we've got negative 100000 And then in each subsequent year, we receive a cash inflow of 10000 which represents our coupon receipt. So that will equal this. So we get this for the next four years. And in year four, in addition to the um, coupon uh, receipt, we also will get the £120,000 um, paid back by the company that we've invested in. So we have to add in first £120,000 and then we press enter. And this is essentially all of our cash flows. So we've got initially a cash outflow followed, followed by subsequent cash inflows. So now it's very simple. We just, to get the effective interest rate, we need to calculate the internal um, rate of return, which gives us the interest rate at which this cash flow here is equal to zero. So we do equals IRR. We then specify our cash flows we close brackets and we press enter and there is our um, effective interest rate so we just plug it in here as 14.06 percent and now it's very simple our opening balance is equal to the initial investment in the corporate bond our in effective interest rate is equal to well, the interest rate that we will be charging on our opening balance is equal to opening balance here times the effective interest rate. We fix that. We press enter. So that's um, the interest rate will increase the value of our because we've invested in a corporate bond. We've got an asset, financial asset. So this interest rate will increase the value of our asset. And then coupon uh, receipt, which is the amount of money we're receiving. From the company that we've invested in that will reduce the value of the asset outstanding so it'll be a negative we've got a negative sign in front of the ten thousand that we are receiving we can fix that too and what we see now is at the end of year four we need this closing balance value to equal one hundred twenty thousand, because that will essentially represent how much money that we will be owed at the end of year four so if we drag down this uh, formula here, we get 109.997. The reason why we've got slight differences due to a rounding error. So if I were to say link 
this 14.06 to the um, cell reference G11, we'll get exactly £120,000. And we can also show the redemption of the bond at the end of the fourth year by entering in minus 120,000. So the closing balance after we've redeemed the bond at the end of year four will equal this plus the redemption amount of 120,000. And that gives us a value of zero at the end of year four. Um, the same principles will also apply when um, calculating the effective interest rate for financial liability. The only difference is, is that you will change the title of coupon received to coupon paid. That's the only difference between the financial asset and a financial liability when calculating the effective interest rate.